Okay, folks, uh, as promised, I'm coming back with my third video and going back to my Glock 34 Generation 4. Uh, I went to the range uh, a few days ago and I was able to put 200 rounds through the gun. I figured that I'm still shooting a little bit left and I decided to reverse uh, my grip a little bit and go back to my rubber grip on top of the original Glock grip. So what I did here is basically using the medium back strap to emulate the original Glock and they put the same grip I had on my Glock 19 on top of it. So let's see how it works on, on next weekend. Uh, aside of that, I did a few new changes. And uh, you can see here, I'm not gonna do this again. You can just go to the internet and search and see how you can disassemble, take the spins out, replace the bar and the trigger. I'm just gonna go to gen in gen generally what I did. So I use the Glock 2, you can use anything that works uh, similarly. And let's first of all make sure the gun is completely unlocked, right? You can see here, there's nothing there. And I'm gonna move that to a safe position and pull the trigger. So it's ready to be disassembled. But let me show you a few parts that I took away first. First part I took away is uh, the connector, the Glock connector. And this gives the partially the weight of the trigger. If you look very carefully, you can see a dot right here. And this is a new Glock connector, original Glock connector, to emulate the same trigger pull on the Gen 4 as you have on the Gen 3. So that's a new part. I took that part away because this is a blue label Glock, came with the dot connector, and I replaced with the minus connector. Again, a Glock OEM, and the minus connector will give me here the four and a half pound pull, okay? This is a, this is a target gun. Uh, other thing I did is I replaced the entire assembly trigger and trigger bar. Uh, this is a Gen 4 uh, trigger bar. You can see a little bump uh, on this edge, and that gives a very peculiar sort of pull on the trigger. And it's different than Gen 3, so I decided to make my gun more Gen 3-like in that regard. So what I did was the following. Uh, let me just disassemble the gun. So I'm not, again, not going to show you how to disassemble because you can do this in your own time. But I just put a new bar, a new uh, trigger bar, and that's embedded in here. And that gives me the four and a half pound. And you can see now the new, uh, actually I, I made a mistake, the connector, it's in here. The bar you can see. I, this is the Gen 3 sort of a bar. And you can see it's smooth, there is no uh, bump or anything. And I just buffed a little bit this portion, this top tip here, uh, to be able to have a very nice and crisp pulling of the trigger. So this portion here touched the safety pin, and that's very important to be very smooth. I didn't do the 25 cent sort of, a, you know, polishing all those parts that you see in the other videos. I don't want to, to lose the warranty on the gun, so I decided to go uh, stock on that, okay? So pretty much in a nutshell, that's the, you know, the, the changes I've done on the Glock. You can see that it's much easier now to just pull the slide back. There's no, the bump is not there anymore, right? So this really flows like a Glock Generation 3 all the way down to the back, and it's assembled again, okay? Very easy, uh, not much expensive. I mean, this is, uh, the minus uh, connector is a little bit expensive. It's in the 25-ish, uh, you know, sort of a range. Um, the, the new trigger and the, the Generation 3, Trigger bar goes around $15, $17. And uh, you can see here also that this is a smooth trigger. And I also replaced, again, with a smooth sort of trigger. So again, that's, that's it. I will come back in a, in a few weeks uh, with some more videos and my impression about the shooting after the grip and all the changes. Thank you.